<sighs> Good morning and welcome to the athletics track. I'm here and I figured I would do something fun today because last week I was here as well and I was here with the Sky 4 and I did the exact same training that I'm going to do today. So what I thought would be exciting is to actually compare a really really light shoe to a really heavy one and then see if it does better, if it does way better, if it did worse than we thought. So it's just a fun experiment. It's just me running the same route, trying it out again because Polar made me do the same training another time. So it's not gonna be a lot of filming here, maybe a couple of slow-mos, I don't know, because it's so cold. It's like two degrees outside. 9.30 in the morning, I'm off. I'm just waiting for my GPS signal and then I'm starting to run. Whew. That was a good run, 45 minutes. Really nice. There is a significant difference between the shoes. And I wanna get into that, but I'm gonna go home first because it's really cold outside and I'm gonna get really cold really soon. So, heading home, watching the data, and then talking to you guys again. Okay, I'm back. Coffee, 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 coffee. Okay, now I have coffee. Mm. Yes. Okay, so first of all, this is not a scientific experiment. It's, there's so many variables that could go wrong here and there's so many differences between last week's training and this week's training. The structural integrity of the shoes are completely different. There's, it's not just the weight, it's just for fun. So take the following with a grain of salt and let's get into how much faster you get when you have lighter shoes. First of all, the run was split into three parts. You had 15 minutes of zone two, warm up, and then 13 minutes in zone three, and then 12 minutes in zone four. I will exclude the warm up because I went peeing both times actually, so the data there isn't usable at all. So let's get into the sky first. This shoe is heavy. It's 370 grams in my US 10 and a half. So I have different stats that I get from Polar and you can watch them here while I cite this thing up. But the most important thing is the distance and the power output and the heart rate in my opinion. So you can actually get something to compare between these shoes. So the first distance I got in the zone three was 3,060 meters. In zone four, in the 12 minutes, I ran 3,070 meters. The power output that I got with the Sky 4 was 416 in zone three and 453 in zone four. I'll also put up the heart rate. I can't remember those, but here they go. Now let's look at the sock and knee speed. This shoe is 135 grams lighter than the Sky 4. So that's 235 grams in a US 10 and a half. Super light. Now while running in the speed, I ran the distance 3,180 meters in the zone three and then 3,160 meters in zone four. I also increased the power output with 431 in zone three and then 470 in zone four. If you look at the heart rate between these two, there's almost no difference, but there's a slightly higher heart rate when I ran in the Saucony speed. I wouldn't put too much into the heart rate because it was measured on the wrist and we all know how wrist measuring is. Oh, it's not good. Now, if we put these numbers into a graph, you'll see that in zone three, I almost got 4% more distance and in zone four, almost 3%. Now this surprised me a little bit and you can also see on the power output that I actually used more power when I ran in zone four with the Saucony speed. So the amount of power I used didn't actually transfer into getting more speed in zone four. Okay, we're here. Now to the most important thing. How much can you save when you choose a lighter shoe? Now in zone three, I saved nine seconds per kilometer and that's 15 seconds per mile if you do the imperial thing and then seven seconds per kilometer in zone four or 12 seconds per mile. So you'll see that for me at least, I went down a little bit that I couldn't save as much when I ran faster. Now this surprised me a little bit in the beginning, but it kind of makes sense. At least if you think about cycling, then you know that the faster you go, the more you have to put in to get more speed. 
Maybe it's like this with running as well, or maybe I'm just really bad at running fast. Do you know anything about this? Write it in the comments down below, tell me what you think. Would you actually consider buying lighter or heavier shoes to train with? Because I sort of consider it more a possibility now to run in heavier shoes so I can actually get more out of those lighter shoes on race day. Because trainings, you don't have to be fast. That's my opinion, what do you think? On Wednesday, I asked you guys on a poll on YouTube what the difference between these shoes would be and 39% of you guys were right. So that's good on you guys. So there's up to 4% difference in the speed and the sky when it comes to distance. And the Kinbara and the speed shouldn't be that far apart. So should the Vaporfly be 4% faster than the speed? I kind of find that hard to believe. Uh, what do you guys think? Have you tried both of those shoes? Is there any difference there? I really want to know. I really want to know. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done that already. Anyways, have a great day. Have a fantastic run. Stay safe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.